Hello, welcome back. So you guys made it to the next section. Good job, guys. This is part two of a four-part tutorial series teaching you guys how to build your own Shopify store straight from your phone. If you haven't already seen part one, I will link that right up here for you guys and I will put it for you in the description box so that you can watch it because you definitely want to see that first. Don't forget that Shopify offers a free three-day trial with no credit card required. So if you haven't already, click the link in the description box and sign up because you are gonna need that to follow along in this video. Okay, so what do we have on the agenda? In this video, you're gonna learn how to put your products into collections. We're gonna add pages to our site, like a contact page. And finally, and probably most importantly, we're gonna finish off by getting you ready to accept payments because that's what we're all here for at the end of the day. Organizing your products into collections. Okay, so imagine if you were shopping for clothes online and everything from jackets to shoes were just on one page. That would be a nightmare. So that's why collections are very important. They're gonna organize your products on a page so that customers can find what they're looking for. Okay, so are you ready to make your first collection? Let's do this. From the admin, tap products, then collections. We have a default collection called homepage. Feel free to delete that later, but for now, let's just click that plus icon. Give your collection a title description because some themes will show this on the collection page. And with it, you wanna be descriptive, but you also wanna be short and sweet. You'll also wanna include an image. Again, some themes will show a big banner image on top of a collection page. And then under availability, just make sure that online store is checked off. Or if you plan on creating hype and dropping a collection in the future, you can schedule it. Here you have control as to which products show and in what order. There are some options to choose from, or you can decide to sort this manually if you like. And if you do decide to sort this manually, consider showing the best sellers and the newest products first and any other products that you would have a reason to sell quickly. See where it says conditions here? You can add a condition for a product to be included in a collection based on criteria, like how much it costs, for example. So for me, I'll add a condition that makes any product with the tag mild be included in this collection, just like that. By the way, you're not limited to the number of collections a product can go in. So let's say my hot sauce is in a sale collection, but also in a mild collection. You can add the same products to a million different collections if you like. Okay, amazing. So now we've just created a collection, but since the collection is not linked anywhere on our website, the customer won't be able to find it. So now let's put this in the navigation. Tap store, then navigation. Generally, collections are added to the main nav, so let's hit main menu, and now let's give it a name. This is what it's gonna show up to your consumer, so I'm gonna name this mild, like I said. Then hit link and hit collections and see how my collection shows up here. So let's tap that and now hit add, and you'll know you've done it right if it's showing up in the menu here. By the way, let's delete any of the menu items that we don't need, like usually the logo leads to the homepage anyway, so we can delete that. And I'm gonna delete catalog as well. Press save, and now you have successfully added a collection to your main navigation. One quick thing I just wanna show you is, let's go back in here into my collection I just made. Look at the link section. In this case, we just added a collection, but look at all the options that you can choose from. You can link a page, like a contact page. You can link your policies, like your shipping and return policies, and you can even include a search function so that customers can find what they're looking for easier. So once you start building your content out on your website, this is how you would include them as links in your navigation. Click the eyeball, which will show us how our store looks to a customer, and yeah, this is looking really good. Okay, so that's in the navigation, but now I also wanna add this collection to the homepage. So from the admin dashboard, click online store, and then customize. And now here you can see that you can add it as a section to show up on the actual meat of your page. Done and done, heck yeah. So now let's start adding some extra pages to our store. Adding pages. Okay guys, pages are for information that won't change often, like an about us page or a contact page. So let's make a contact page together. Go back on the admin page and tap store for me, then hit pages. Let's click the big green button on the top right hand corner and let's give this contact page a title. Now scroll down, see where it says theme template? Click the drop down and you'll see contact. It will automatically import a contact form without you having to build it. Edit website SEO to control how it will look on a Google listing. So I'm doing this here like this, nice and simple, and I'm gonna tap save. 
Press the three little dots to preview what it's gonna look like to your customer. And that looks great, love it, but don't forget to add these to your navigation. Okay, so I know we already lightly touched on organizing your menus, but let me just explain what should be in each of your menus. So you're gonna have a main menu and that's gonna come on the top of your website. This should include shop, your collections, and a search bar. Think of your main menu as a place where you make it easier for customers to shop. Anything that's more like informational and transactional, like shipping policies and your contact or newsletter signups, that's all gonna be put in the footer. The footer is the menu that is at the bottom of your webpage. Okay, I just wanted to put that out there because it's important that you're not wasting precious real estate in the main menu with something that might distract customers from shopping. And speaking of precious real estate, if you're finding that your main menu is too crammed, check this out. You can actually nest links to save yourself some space like this. Let's say you have a collection called sale. You can nest links under it, like under 10 bucks, under $20, under $30. And yeah, that's a hot little tip for you right there. How to set up legal pages. The sound of adding legal info can sound intimidating, but Shopify does make it really easy to set this part up. Now, it is important that you guys have this before you launch, just in case of a customer dispute. So let's set this up together. Go to store, settings policy, and here we have a refund policy, a privacy policy, terms of service, shipping policy, and contact information. So let's go through these one by one. Starting with our return policy. Returns and exchanges are all gonna be part of doing business. UPS has reported that 68% of shoppers will check the return policy before making a purchase. So that means you wanna make a return policy that benefits the customer in order to increase your conversion rate and repeat customers. But of course, you have to make the decisions that make the most sense for your business. So consider these things to include in your policy. Consider which items are gonna be eligible for return and exchange. Also be clear about how long the customer has to make a return or exchange. Is it going to be 30 days? Is it going to be 90 days? Talk about what condition products can be returned in. Are you going to accept them lightly worn or do they need to have tags still attached? How can customers actually initiate a return? Do you want them to email you or do you want them to submit an online form? And then also make sure that you're explaining which products are final sale. So to do this, click create form template and customize it. Or if you want, you can use your own on brand words. Make sure to link this on all your product pages, the checkout page and footer. Being transparent increases communication and trust, which will increase your conversion rate. So make sure that you're linking this in all of those places. All right, let's move on to the privacy policy. So a privacy policy is a legal statement of how you will manage your customer's data. So if you're collecting emails and you know their address, it's kind of the law, you kind of have to do it. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have no clue about anything to do with legal. So you can always leverage Shopify's templates and customize it just like this. Now, let's do terms of service. So terms of service protects your content and it protects your company from abuse. So you're definitely gonna wanna add this and you're gonna make sure that you're putting it in the footer. I don't know about you guys, but I literally always check a shipping page before placing an order online because like I wanna see how much they're gonna charge me and I wanna see how fast it'll get to me. So let's do that together now. So when setting this up, you wanna make sure that you're being clear about which regions you do and do not ship to and how customs and duties work. Usually, it's a customer's responsibility to pay for duties and taxes, so make sure that you're putting that in there. And you can also outline your rates and how long shipping will take. All you gotta do is tap save, and now all your legal stuff is done. Quick and easy. Setting up your emails. Okay, imagine placing an order and then never receiving an email that confirms your purchase. I don't know about you, but that would give me peak anxiety levels. So let's make sure that we're not causing any undue stress to our customers. And let's start by setting up transactional emails like purchase confirmations and shipping notifications. Go to store settings and notifications. Now you're gonna see a list of emails that your customers are currently receiving from you. So go through them one by one to make sure that this is on brand and accurate for you. So for example, I'm gonna click into order confirmation and this is looking really good, but let's say I did wanna make any changes, I'd have to go and edit the code button right here. Like, I don't know about you guys, I'm personally not a big coder, so I'm just gonna leave this as is. But if I do back out of here and tap customize email templates, one thing that I should definitely be doing is adding my logo and changing my accent color to be on brand. Okay, great, so we just conquered transactional emails, but what about those marketing emails that help you push sales? Let me show you where you can set these up because we want these moneymaker emails to fire off automatically to help increase sales. So you're gonna go into store, marketing, automations, and then explore all marketing automations. 
From here, you can choose which ones you'd like to set up. I mean, I personally think that all of these are very important. Uh, do you have to launch with all of these active and ready to go? Not necessarily, but you definitely wanna have these up and ready to go within the first few months of operating. Next, let's update the email address that customers will see these messages coming from. So we're gonna hit settings, click store details, and make sure your email address under sender email and contact store email is your professional one, and then you're gonna click save. That is it, emails are out of the way. Now, the most important part, the part that we've all been waiting for, let's get ourselves set up to get paid. The sole reason that we're creating a Shopify store in the first place is to make sales and gain the financial freedom to create a better life for ourselves. So this part is really fun. Go to store, then settings, then payments. The first option that we have here is Shopify payments. Shopify payments is the simplest route, but let's say for whatever reason you wanna accept payments through PayPal or maybe a third party provider, you do have the option to do so. Tap activate Shopify payments. You'll input your personal and banking info. And when you're done, click complete account setup. We did it. Yes, we did. 50% of the way through guys. Good job. And as always, if you have any questions about literally anything that we talked about in this video, leave it in the comment section and I will do my best to get back to each and every single one of you. Hit that like button as well, because it does help our channel and our community grow. And each video is added into a playlist linked right over here. So be sure to follow along. And as always guys, Learn with Shopify is a channel that is for small business owners with big plans. So don't forget to subscribe so that you stay up to date on the latest tips to help you take your business to the next level. My name is Michelle Bally. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in part three. Bye.